Humans can be pretty stupid, especially when it comes to things like money or fads, and that does not change no matter what time period you are looking at. But some things are worse than others, especially when it comes to things like radiation. So back in the early 19th century, you had this thing called radioactive quackery. Now, when humans first discovered radiation, they thought essentially that it was going to be the cure-all for everything, whether this was going to be health, whether this was going to be beauty, whether this was going to be energy needs. Literally everything could be solved by radiation. And so people developed a variety of different products that would be cure-alls for all of these different things, thus giving us radioactive quackery. Now, these products were sold for decades. So today, I wanted to go ahead and take a look at a couple of these um, geniuses and the products that they made. So I wanted to start off this list with a product that is actually my favorite one. And you see, the reason why this one is my favorite product is because in comparison to the rest of the others, this one actually does what it was advertised to do. I mean, on top of that, it does a lot worse things and the bad definitely outweighs the good, but it still does deliver at least partially on that initial promise of cleaning your teeth. Which yes, cleaning your teeth. This, my friends, was a toothpaste. So Doramad was this toothpaste that was mixed with thorium oxide that had been supplied to German troops since the First World War. The product had initially been devised as a way of using up this residual waste from lantern production that was the main business of a German company by the name of Arugelschaft. Arugelschaft? Ar 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 you know what, I'm not even going to be able to pronounce that, so I'm just going to call it Auger. The company used thorium to make gas lanterns shine more brightly, and a leaflet that had been produced by the company explained in German, protect yourself by using biologically active, radioactive, doormad toothpaste. The reason that they stated that this would work was because it was supposedly supposed to increase the circulation of the blood in your gums, destroy germs, and increase the life force of the tissues of the mouth. It would help make your smile shine. And so the reason why I like this so much is that technically speaking, yes, the radiation would actually kill the germs. It just also at the same time is going to kill all the other cells around said germs in the first place. But that is not even the best part. The reason why this product is so insanely funny is that during World War II, the Allies were terrified that the Germans were ahead of them by years in terms of nuclear technology, and that they would be the first ones to develop nuclear bombs, which was a very real fear to have. America's response to this was to set up something called the ALSOS mission, which was tasked with preventing this from happening. ALSOS was comprised of about 30 members, mostly scientists, headed by Lieutenant Colonel Boris T. Pash, who was the former head of security on the Manhattan Project, and Samuel A. Goudsmit, a Dutch-American atomic physicist, as the project's scientific head. Now, once it was assembled, the team were sent into Nazi Germany on the heels of advancing Allied troops. In here, they would collect information, they would interview scientists, and generally just investigate anything to do with Germany and radioactive materials, whether it was in laboratories, whether it was in factories, anything they could get their hands on. And so while the team was in Brussels, they find these documents that basically state that a German chemist who is working for that auger company has located a large supply of radioactive material and is shipping it back to Germany. And then he flees with his secretary. So they go and chase this guy down, a chemist by the name of Jansen. And once they find him, they interrogate him, trying to figure out what he is doing, why he is, has this material, and whether or not he is building a bomb. No, he's not building a bomb. In the end, he was just trying to kill germs, not people, by making toothpaste. In addition to dental hygiene, there was a whole host of beauty products that utilized radiation that were popular for decades before people realized that putting literal cell killers on your face was probably a bad idea. One of these products was called Thoradia. Now, Thoradia was founded in 1932 by a pharmacist by the name of Alexis Masali. His intent was to create a line of cosmetics that were incorporating rare earth elements such as thorium and radium, both of which are radioactive. 
Musali brought the physician Alfred Curie on board as a figurehead in order to capitalize on the name being made famous by Pierre and Mary Curie. Now, Alfred might have shared their name, but he had no actual relation. The real Curies even at one point considered taking legal action against them, but they never actually took it to court, which honestly, considering all of this, they probably should have in the first place. The company's signature product was this thing called Thoradia Cream, which was supposed to activate circulation, firm the tissue, remove grease, remove wrinkles, and give your skin a healthy glow. Oh, it's glowing all right. And it was said to be prepared by Musali according to a formula that was attributed to Alfred Curie. Now, in 1937, a dramatic change was forced upon Theradio when the French government placed significant restrictions on the sale of products that contained thorium and radium. In response, the company seems to have stopped using these ingredients. And so, despite the basis for the name, Theradia continued to exist for decades, but without any actual radioactive elements in their products anymore. There is actually a long history of marketing efforts designed to lessen people's anxiety about different consumer products, and honestly, there is probably no product on Earth that received quite nearly as much attention as cigarettes. In the 1960s, when it really started hitting home that smoking actually kills, companies adopted a popular marketing strategy that involved uranium, ironically enough. So radium skin cream, just like we discussed, is a well-known example of historically bogus uses of radiation as a health tonic, but there have actually been a number of players that we don't always hear about, and one of these was an item called the Nikko Clean Tobacco Card. Now, this card first appeared in Japan and soon became a pretty popular export as Americans clamored for a way to keep on smoking without worrying about the health consequences. This was a small card and it was blue and contained a shake or two of uranium. Smokers were supposed to slip it inside their packs of cigarettes where the radiation from the uranium would somehow eliminate the poisons in cigarettes. Now, the packaging on the card claimed that it would reduce the tar content of the cigarettes by 17%. I'm not exactly sure how it would do that, but hey, okay. And that in addition to this, it wouldn't sacrifice the taste at all, but remove 50% of toxins in the cigarettes themselves. Naturally speaking, this did not happen. It was completely false. And our last product on this list is Radithor. Now, Radithor is perhaps the most famous and simplest of all the products that we will list, as it was quite literally just triple distilled water with at least one microcurie of radium-226 that was manufactured between 1918 and 1928 by the Bailey Radium Laboratories in East Orange, New Jersey. But that simple formula did not stop its creator, William J.A. Bailey, who was a literal con artist, from claiming that it would do everything from curing arthritis, rheumatism, mental illness, stomach cancer, even impotence. Now, William promised two things. The first was that each dosage of Radithor would contain at least one microcurie of radium, and that if you could prove that it didn't, he would pay you a thousand dollars. Needless to say, no one ever actually proved that. The second thing was that it was completely harmless. And that second thing he was not actually able to prove and came back to bite him in the butt. In fact, Radithor is one of the only radioactive quackery products that we have confirmation directly led to the death of someone, as a man by the name of Eben McBurney Byers drank 1,400 of the bottles before his body began to literally decay. The death of Byers also resulted in the end of radioactive patent medicine, and in 1931, the FTC issued a cease and desist order halting the Bailey Radium Laboratories from producing more of its famed Radithor. Every bottle from every store that was found selling it was taken away from public use. And with mounting evidence from others stating radium's harm, counter pamphlets were sent around to warn the public of its danger. Honestly, that whole story of Radithor is in and of itself probably an entertaining video, and I could make an entire video dedicated to it or really any number of products. If you all would like to see something like that, please do let me know. Give me a like, give me a subscription. 
uh, comment down below. Let me know what it is that you would like to see. But with that, I think that that is going to be the end of today's video. There are plenty more dumb events in history, plenty more dumb products for us to cover in the future and their histories. And if you want to see anything in particular or want a story behind something, then let me know. Thank you all for watching. This has been Stakui. I appreciate all of you and you have a good rest of your day.